We now have um, Greg Ralston from the National Library, um, digital tinkerer and all-round technical dude, um, is going to talk to us about getting to know the Coomera Times. Yeah. Howdy, everyone. Um, so. For all the you uh, fancy AR VR people who were in the room before, this is some OG 100 year old um, fancy technology shenanigans. This is a, this is a particular photo uh, is one of those stereoscopic things that I've rocked backwards and forwards at about half a frame a second to make it look 3D, but they actually come in like little two things. So when a year ago I wrote this talk, I knew I'd be following those guys and I've uh, just, you know, representing. So anyway, uh, this little thing here is what I knew about, about two years ago, about the Kumara Times. It is not Kumara, and it's not a clock, it is the Kumara Times. It's a newspaper. Um, so I used to look after the collaborative newspaper program for uh, the Papers Past uh, National Library business, it's where groups of people would come up and they'd say, hey, we really want to get our local newspaper title um, from a hundred years ago into papers past and um, between application cycles one year this guy contacted me and he said hey in like two years it's gonna be 150 years since this guy here said and came to Hokitika or West Coast or I don't actually know what it was I should know this I don't um, and this guy here is I shouldn't have a favorite. Um, I looked after the collaborative newspaper program for about four years, three years, I actually can't remember. I shouldn't have a favorite collaborator, but it's this guy here. He actually does tours of Hokitika in this get up, which is him dressed like Seddon, uh, doing readings from uh, that book that was real famous from down, there, Luminaires, Luminaries, whatever, it's, you know the one I mean. Um, but anyway, so he actually, uh, he came up to me, well he, he came up to me, he sent me a letter on his own stationery, which is very unusual, I only get, normally get emails, um, asking, uh, he was like, hey, we want to do this thing, want to get the Kumara Times onto Papers Past, and I was like, yep, sure, when do you need it done, thinking he was going to say tomorrow, like everyone else, but he was like, no, I've got two years until it's 150 years since Seddon first came to Pokatika. So he went out and he made a pamphlet. He had an article in the local paper which has a bank account number you can donate to, which is fast, which is blows the mind um, that people, you know, I've got friends online that won't take put their bank accounts on Facebook because they're scared they're going to get this guy put in the newspaper, which is awesome. So that's David Verrill there when he's not dressed as uh, Seddon. Um, this pamphlet here that I really badly photographed is from, it was actually an ad in the, uh, genealogy, New Zealand geology, genealogy, um, family history magazine -y thing. So they not only handed out um, pamphlets, they also did that. But anyway, he's a bit of a legend. Here's me photoshopping him in next to the statue because I was saying, hey, next time you make a statue of Seddon, maybe you should do it with David Verrill dressed as Seddon because that'd be, that appeals to my sense of humor. Uh, and it'd be funny. Uh, and he's awesome. He's really awesome. Like I, I feel like I've just mocked him a little bit, but no, I should say that he was so awesome to work with. Normally, when people come to me, came to me, it was all kind of like part of their job. You know, it's like oh, I've got this much to spend on digitization. We want to do it on papers past. But this guy was like went out. You know, I've always, I always had this joke that uh, I'm not going to be happy with Clabber's newspaper room until someone does a sausage sizzle outside Bunnings to get their money. And he didn't quite do that, but he might as well have. So I'm going to take that as a win. Um, in the end, they only got half the money they needed. Uh, the New Zealand Society for Genealogists uh, came up with the other half, but we got it up online uh, well in advance. And you might be like, why have you told me this? That's why I wrote this talk, was that I then got invited down to uh, Hokitika to do a talk at their celebrations for the 150th year of Seddonness. Um, and I was like, holy crap, this is what, this is how I identify. I don't identify myself as like an old timey guy. I know nothing about history. I might work for a library and look at here for the newspapers all day, well, a lot of the time. But I'm more like this guy. It's like, if I saw this photo when I was a kid, I'd be like, this guy's the man. Like, this is, this is probably what, when I, if I saw this when this came out, like in the 80s, I'm assuming it's the 80s based on all this stuff, I would have been like, this is how I think I should be right now. This should be me right now. 
but you know I didn't but anyway I saw her as a funny photo in the internet I thought hey that's cool no, no, yep. So I had no idea what I was doing uh, with this talk. So I knew I was going to be talking to people who didn't really get into technology like I did. They weren't like me. They were uh, probably going to be way older than me, uh, as most fans of Papers Fast are. Um, and so I had no idea. So I started, I was like, this is what I know about the Kumara Times. Oh, my fonts. Oh, those aren't the right fonts. Imagine this stuff looks prettier. That's how much we digitized of the Kumara Times. It was like eight, oh, and I should have written this down as well. It was like 18 something to uh, 1880 something, and then there was a gap, and then some 96. It wasn't a massive chunk of stuff. Um, this is why I should bring my notes. I left my notes at home. Anyway, so what I normally do when I'm investigating things is I do stuff like open up our fantastic website at natlib.govt. something. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so this is Kumara. This is what it was back in town. It was a huge boom town in um, ages ago with the gold rush and all that kind of good stuff. The town itself is just this tiny little bit over here, and all this madness over here is all gold mines and good stuff. Um, so I knew they had a map. I knew they had a sick water slide, as you can see down here. This is a, the Kumara water slide. I think there's again something to do with gold mining as well. I told you I'm awesome with history. Uh, I know that that's one time they had some fancy people come, so they put um, palm trees, and this was like, if this was on Reddit, that would blow their mind, because there's a camera looking at a camera. Wow. It's a shame they didn't have the internet back then. Um, but then I found this, and this was kind of what I was looking for when I was looking through all these photos. Like, not only was I just trying to get a sense of the thing, but I wanted a juicy story that I could, like, blow these people at this history seminar's mind and I was going to somehow link in technology because that would be awesome. So what I found is this Lewis Slowish guy, and I still haven't worked out how to say his name a year later. Um, these are his two kids, of, uh, he had quite a few kids, uh, and he blew off his arm and one of his eyes or both his eyes or something in a um, dynamite explosion in Kumar stuff. The, uh, it says there somewhere, it was like one and a half to two miles at 10 o'clock in the morning he did some mischief to himself um, and so this was the cool thing and so here what I had is I had my original newspaper which was the Kumara Times what? I had now I had a store a sweet photo that tugs at the heart, heartstrings and now I have found him on papers past uh, getting injured and then I found the other guy and the guy's got a nice it's a good thing his name wasn't John Smith because that would have been trouble but he's got a fairly unique name, so I could, uh, uh, um, I found, see all these little things down here? These are all these uh, uh, articles on Papers Past that I found about him. So I found about him as injury, which is um, when him and his buddy blew himself up. Then I found this cool thing here, which was a, they had a couple of concerts for his benefit to get him some medical business, uh, take him over to Melbourne and do cool medical things in Melbourne. Uh, you can see they did a couple of those there. Uh, oh, so the other thing uh, that I've just totally skipped over is this weird timeline thing that I've put together. So this is timeline.js, which I'll cover more in the details, but I was thinking this was a perfect thing to show these oldies how, to, how they could display stuff in an awesome way that would um, not just be sending links to their uh, friends and family. Um, anyway, so here we go. Melbourne people, doctors can't do it. I'm gonna skip through this quickly because it's, it's an interesting story, but it's not the main thing dragging a little bit anyway so through all this so from 1896 ish to here you know there was it was all about you can see the uh, how many articles I found about this fella through here and then we get to here and we see these deserving case which will have his name that I found and these are the same text it's the exact same text posted in newspapers all around the country saying hey there's this one-armed blind organ grinder give him some money he's a legit dude and so it was like he traveled the country um getting this thing printed in all the papers so this one here is in dunedin here's one in waikato there's ones like uh, other places that i haven't written down and have forgotten in the year since i wrote this uh and then this is the end of the story the last time i found unfortunately some nasty woman robbed him in auckland and that's a really shitty end to that story, sorry. But that's the end of the story. Um, and it's a good thing that I didn't make my whole talk about this because when I got down to Kumara, that's me, 
just in case you didn't know, standing next to the photo and the whole story on a billboard. So yeah, if you're interested, that's actually how that thing that you just saw was built. You've got a um, spreadsheet that you just dump the stuff in, then you follow these simple instructions and it looks like that and it's all interactive and stuff and it's real cool and I have it online that I can you can see the link at the end if you want to do it uh, if you're s sort of interested in tinkering with technology stuff but don't know code or anything this is a perfect way to kind of get your feet wet in this kind of making stuff with technology space uh, then so right back to the drawing board being all smoky and cartoony and my computer head thing again um, I decided all right no we need to do more technology here we need to go back to my roots become cool 80s dude with all my technology and do something cool because stories half-assed stories told by me are not going to cover uh, when I'm representing at this live uh, heritage seminar so what I did was I took every single issue of the or page of the Kumara Times and I made my own interface because why not uh, I figured how am I going to understand this stuff if I can't uh, play around with it because uh, normally when I've done things like this before I've always like written crazy scripts and made cool graphs and it all look sweet and stuff but I was trying to be all right, let's just look at the pages for once never look at you know I, I, I spend all this time looking at them but how do I really look, do I ever really look at them it's deep man so I made this sick uh, little interface. Where's my dot? Can you see my dot? Where's my dot? It's right at the top. There we go. Okay, so up at the top of these, these cool Xbox colors. Those are intentional because I've actually got the order wrong so that I uh, wouldn't get sued by Microsoft accidentally. Um, but basically what this is, is it's uh, mapped to my keyboard. So the whole idea was this. Is I was doing a lot of this work outside of work time. Some of it was in work time, but this was like, I need to explore this while I'm watching TV lying on the couch, putting in as little effort as possible, keys to go through newspapers. So left arrow would take me back an issue, right arrow forward an issue, up and down would go up and down through the issue, through the pages, yeah, that's uh, So I was living the high life for a while, just cruising through this newspaper thinking I was pretty flash. Um, and then I noticed that they were all the same, like all the pages are the same. So I made this, which is, when you scroll back, and what it would do is I'm doing this, I shouldn't have set up doing this, I should have pretended this isn't actually looking at it, but this was what it would do. It would animate backwards and forwards, and then I would say, true or false, that these pages look almost identical the same. Now you can see the dates there are changing, so it is actually a different page. And I did about 160 of these marking matched finding. I didn't actually count how many didn't match, because I wasn't thinking it far enough ahead, I think I was a little bit too relaxed. Um, but it got real boring real fast and I did it for a couple of nights uh, and the data was useless. I was going to make a sick graph but it would have been real, real sad. So this is what I came up with. So this is using my uh, graphic design slash animation skills from my uni days. I was like, well, animation is 24 frames a second. Why don't we just chuck the newspaper into Premiere or After Effects, I don't even remember what I did in. So I animated the front pages at 24 frames a second, so we're, for every second that you see there, that's 24 issues of newspaper. So you might be able to tell that it's not changing much. Uh, and when it is, it looks all um, liquidy and blurry and stuff. Um, so this was every single page that was a run, uh, uh, in a run, but I have, I have them online later, you can check out the, uh, they're on my, my, my um, that thing that people, uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> um, so the first time I presented this, I did two pages at the time. It was the front and the back pages, but I felt that made me sick. It was like, it actually made you a little bit, because you can see how this one here kind of dances. It's like, dances up and down. Um, it freaks you out a little bit. Um, so, but anyway, the learning, the thing, I, I love this. This is my favorite thing ever. For, for, so one, it proves that the front page never changed. Half the back chain never changed. Changed a little bit there, right as I do it. Most of the ads are boring as hell. They're all ads. So these are like super important things because like, I, I mean, I look at these things all the time. I do the image QA for every single, not every single thing. I do like 10% of the things that go on in uh, uh, papers past. So I see a lot of newspapers and I never picked up just how many damn ads there were. This was fascinating. Um, and I'm just gonna stop there because that's getting kind of boring.
but if you do, for whatever reason, need to go to sleep tonight, it's on the internet. I can send you a link. In fact, I'll tweet it afterwards, because that's what the cool kids do, right? Um, but I did discover this ad. I'm just going to pause here, because how cool is this ad, right? Like, one, bacon trade, more pork. Ow, eyes are open. Owls have big eyes. H burger. 40 years before hamburgers were invented, people, there was a guy that had a bacon thing called H Burger. Just let that sink in. They told me they were going to track him down and find out more about H Burger because I bought this up in Hooker Ticket. No one has come back to me. Disappointed. So, the rest of the time, I'm going to talk a little bit about the ads because I don't know, I find them real interesting or whatever. But this is one that I saw all the time, and I have a feeling this might have actually been a um, placeholder thing. Like, they were like, ah, oh, we don't have enough ads. Jimmy has not upped his bacon ad this month, or this week, or whatever. So they had this in here. And now this is funny, basically saying these are the official places you can read our newspaper, which is a weird thing to me. But then when you think about it, it's not that dissimilar from this. It's that the official hydration partner of the All Blacks or this one, which is my favorite one. And I guess it's a stretch, but it's like, I've always thought of these things, like hi official hydration partner. I mean, I'm pretty sure like 10 years ago they would have said drink partner, but whatever. Um, I've always thought of these as new things, but it's clear, like people have been doing sleazy advertising business for years. I mean, sure, it doesn't say official, and it isn't, you know, uh, they don't have it painted on their uniform or whatever, but you know, it's that same thing. And then I found this guy here who I think is probably mostly to blame for all this bad advertising bad business. Um, so does anyone know Professor Holloway? No. Does anyone know this ad here? <laughs> you would have seen it all along the right side of the newspaper. If you've ever used papers past, you would have seen these ads. They're everywhere. This guy, Mr. Holloway, or Professor Holloway, sorry, had a goal to be advertising in every single newspaper in the world and he spent 50% of everything he earned on advertising. This is a really weird article in that it's an article, not an ad, but it's talking about how awesome this guy was in Hokut or Kumara, and the guy lived in like London or something. Actually, I don't know where he's from. But he had this thing where he would always have the same ads, always in that same side of the newspaper, and it's for like snake oil pills. They're like, I don't even know what they do. I, maybe they'll slow around and they're gonna sue me, who knows. But he has also had this other interesting thing, which is my other shady advertising little uh, thingamajigami, which is letters that aren't letters. So this kind of looks like a letter, isn't a letter. And you see a lot of these in <laughs> um, the newspapers. Uh, uh, and you can, I mean, no one from Bermuda is going to write to freaking Hokitika, uh, Kumara, sorry. They probably didn't even exist. They probably didn't know New Zealand existed anyway. There's lots of really bad stuff, and I mean, fake news, I've heard that term boiled up a few days, a few times today, and I would like to propose that this guy here with his shady, this miracle cure shaved me, it was the original stuff like this. So on the left here, you have, uh, a, well, at first glance, an article about beautiful handcrafted jewelry, actually a promoted offer. And on the right, you have a thing from my Facebook, oh, so that was stuff, sorry, the stuff app on my phone. This is the Facebook app on my phone, and for some reason, it thought that I would really like to start uh, shopping in Wish, and that I would like whatever the hell that is. Um, and the, to me, these are the same as those letters, right? Like, these are content that is designed to look like regular content, but isn't that actually, it isn't actually content. Like, I've never heard of Wish before, none of my friends have. And that looks like something that I would find on my desk that's a mistake from soldering uh, a blob of solder to the end of a wire. That is some terrible jewellery, sorry people. Much like this. And so this is not selling things. Well, I guess that's selling things. But these are content and I guess those letters. And again, this is something that I've always, and I guess this is probably me just being young and naive. Well, I'm not, I'm not even that young. Naive or whatever, that thinking that all these sort of shady things have happened in social media and on the internet, you know, like... Uh, dodgy ads designed to look like articles. Uh, okay, I'm supposed to be politically neutral here, but I would, and I will say that I'm not knocking national here. I'm knocking whoever thought writing Word with whatever content ever. It's not 1998. It's a bad call. I hope that person got fired. Um, anyway, 
that's my rant on that. So, like all good uh, internet things, you can fix. Uh, I, I use Adblock pretty much exclusively on all my computers. I'm probably shameful to say, probably not the cool thing to say anymore. I don't know because you used to go to those websites and they tell you uh, you're whole, you're killing our site by using it. Make better content. <laughs> Anyway, so I wrote, I wrote ad blocker for Heritage Newspapers, just to prove a point. And this is the first and the second page of the Kumara Times. Uh, as you can see, the front page is completely uh, blank, apart from the metadata at the top there. Um, the, I am pretty sure that's actually an ad that didn't get tagged right, because generally when they start the articles, you have the little mini masthead there. So, <laughs> page three and four, not much better. I actually think that's also an ad that hasn't been tagged correctly. That's the little thing at the end saying this was printed by Jimmy Smith or whatever. Can't read it, probably doesn't say that. Um, not much content on the Kumara Times. But this wasn't the, um, this isn't uh, that dissimilar from any other newspaper of this time. So to prove that, I'm gonna go through my favorite, the Evening Post, which I delivered when I was young. Front page. Just death and birth notices. Second page, nothing. Third page, we've got some content, like in it. Uh, and that means I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll briefly skim. Look, almost had a whole page of content, but no, there was an ad there. Same thing here. <sighs> Actually, that one is a whole page. I thought there wasn't any. Anyway, we're going to skip through because this is going to be boring. Um, that actually is an ad. <laughs> Even the National Library is not perfect in its tagging of metadata, sorry. Um, but anyway, so you can check this out. If you want to look at any of your favorite Papers Past newspaper title, I have a version of Hacked Papers Past that you can, not hacked, <laughs> creatively engineered to display this. These are actually screen grabs from that version. So I'll give you that link right now. Uh, that's the URL there. I will actually tweet it. Um, from that's my so no, so there's no fake news coming out. That is my handle that will be coming from, and that is the URL. Uh, yeah, that's that's my talk. Sorry, I feel like I fired through that real quick. No, it's fine. Thanks, Greg, for that hilarious and uh, well deconstructed um, meta talk um, can you create uh, sort of an overview like data about the sort of historical variation of advertising to sort of see if there are you know geographic patterns or patterns over time and this kind of thing is that something you're interested in doing or I mean I could don't have time to do that's that a, or it's another. not part of my job but I could potentially yeah, yeah. Um, like so, I mean, uh, if you were talking about say from the papers past source, yeah. So yeah, so we mark up in our Mets Alto illustrations. I think the ones I know for sure are definitely ads and articles. So you could potentially do that. And what you were talking, you were more interested in like where does this ad appear around the country, or like how often it was there, or who who where you know who who has the most ads? How does it vary over time? Oh, very um, from what my experience, I mean, you're welcome to use my hacked papers past and have a look for yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it seemed pretty consistent to be honest. Like I think um, the thing with, you know, I'll flick back through it real quick to here. So the front page and the back page of the newspaper are like on the same sheet, yeah? So this is like basically a folded thing. So you can almost imagine that they did the front uh, well, the front and the back page at the start, when the, like you know, at the start of the month, he got his intern or whatever to just print out all these things, and then and so I feel like a lot of that stuff was maybe like um, convenient, if that makes sense. What I'm what I'm trying to get at is like you know, I feel like a lot of this stuff was just we need to fill up the space, and there was sometimes now uh, where you'd see there wasn't an ad there, and I feel that's like a guy didn't pay his bill, and he's like, oh, I'll get you old Steve, pay your bill. Um, but yeah, uh, as to, we also chunk up ads really weird on Papers Past, so if I can just find a really long example. So like this would be listed as one whole big ad, rather than say, this is one, two, 
four ads. You know, we don't actually chunk them up that well because uh, I guess when we were writing the original, well, I wasn't writing it. Pivot of the original uh, specs for Papers Past was like, well, no one cares about individual ads. We just care about the articles. And they're probably right, except for Puertos like me. They have a thing for cool owls. Ah, such a good picture. It's actually one of the best woodblock things I've seen on Papers Past. I've looked at a lot of ads. I love this thing so much. Anyway. Thanks. Now the fish is thank you very much. Thank you.